we explore the challenges, opportunities and experiences of women across the world. The BBC's 100 Women. Now, with Christmas, of the Christmas season creeping ever closer, I'm sure uh, you're doing all you can to resist giant tubs of chocolates and other things on supermarket shelves instead of opting for the smaller packet. More, whatever uh, may be good for your waist, but it might not be so good for your wallet. With the which consumer group finding that smaller packets may in fact cost more than twice as much per hundred grams. Why are consumers paying more for less? And for instance, if you have a small uh, thing of chocolate like that, it actually is going to pay cost you a lot more for every ounce or gram than, say, a big box like this, if you eat those bigger tubs of chocolate. Joining me now is Joe Gladstone, who's Assistant Professor at University College London and a consumer behavioural expert. Do you want a chocolate? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, actually, if I don't eat it, we won't be able to talk. <laughs> um, but uh, the... The, the obvious explanation, I suppose, is that if you have a small packet, it costs actually more to make. The economies of scale mean that you get a big box and it, it's actually cheaper to make, so you offer it cheaper. Isn't that what they're doing? Companies don't decide to price things on the basis of how much it costs them to make. Mostly, they price things based on what they think you'll pay for it. So there's a lot of instances where... Um, really? Cost has got nothing to do with this? Cost has something to do with it, but it's just a very marginal element in deciding how much to price things. So it's all, the cost is always um, it's, it's based on marketing, basically. It's on how much, as you say, you, you can get somebody to pay for it. Exactly. I mean, consumers are profoundly bad at making some kinds of decisions, and this is a good example of where consumers aren't able to optimise and decide between lots of different choices. So they use simple rules of thumb, and that's what is being used by companies to sell them more stuff. Most supermarkets have beneath the price they have the price per hundred gram or the price per kilo does that not have an effect do people not look at those it would be great if that was the case across all different product ranges but often you'll see that actually companies might price in grams on one product and price in milliliters in another and that's thought it's because it'll help consumers to not make the best decision between the two so what other techniques do they use then i mean there are things like buy one get one free i'm sure that's a deal, isn't it? I mean, it strikes me, <laughs> to uh, my simple uh, <laughs> consumerist view. Well, it's only a deal if it's a real offer. Like, was it actually priced at X beforehand, or have they just actually increased the price in order to offer a buy one, get one free? Are they allowed to do that? Uh, surely there are rules about when you say something say, is on a sale, do you not have to reduce it from the price at which it normally is sold at? There are rules, but the Office of Fair Trading, when it has done investigations, has actually found that supermarkets often break these rules, um, and they're often guidelines rather than explicit rules. Now, what about at this time of year? Do the, um, do the sort of... Uh, let's call them deception, because they are slight like deception. Do they, do they sort of ma are they magnified at this time of year? They're magnified because consumer shopping is so much greater this time of year. And there's actually a lot of changes in the way that people are spending money now that might help consumers. So, for example, it's much easier to compare prices online than it is in store. So you could imagine that with the increase in online shopping across Christmas, that people might actually be making better choices than in the past, where they had to much higher search costs to compare things across stores. So do we end up spending, spending far more money than we really ought to? Or is that, is that actually, I can almost say, answer that myself, <laughs> <but> certainly yes, <laughs> at Christmas time. But are they successful in just getting us to buy a huge amount of things which we don't really need? Well, if you look at the giant amount of consumer debt that's created and you look at how much people buy things and then throw away the food, it would suggest that we're not optimising how much we buy for our own needs. Mm, is it their fault? their fault for luring us into spending it or is it our fault for falling into the traps? We'll leave that question <laughs> hanging there. Thank Joe Gladstone, thanks so much for that. Now, uh, that's all we've got time for on business, but we can hand you back now to Lucy in the States. Lucy.